So when it comes to binding and adding influence to, an, to a mesh, it's pretty easy to basically do the binding. Uh, so let's just start with the binding. We're going to select the mesh, shift select the joint. You can select either the root of the joint chain or you can select individual joints if you want to actually bind to specific parts of the joint structure instead of the whole thing. And in your animation menus, you find the skin menu, and usually you want to go to smooth bind, and then go to option box, and in this case, I want to bind to the entire joint hierarchy, so I'm using that. If you're doing specific joints, then you choose specific, uh, selected joints. And usually the bind method I use by default is usually going to be closest in hierarchy or distance. Um, those are usually the most common and most compatible defaults. If you are using a newer version of my, you can use either heat map or the geodesic voxel. And usually these newer methods give you a much uh, more refined binding, but you still need to go through and check your weights. Um, skinning method, usually weight blend is fine, or uh, you can do the dual quarter, uh, the dual or the classic, either one's fine. Just choose one. Uh, normalizing weights, you usually want to do interactive. You never want to do post. Um, post actually means you're going to have to usually paint weights in a very, shall we say, time consuming fashion. Um, interactive actually makes the changes a little more immediate and you get to see the results immediately. Like as soon as you add weight to one, uh, one uh, give, give control to a joint, it automatically takes it away from any others that are affecting it. It is definitely more efficient if you're actually in a hurry. Uh, okay, so then we have weight distribution, neighbors, nearest distance. Again, this is going to be preference. I usually do distance. And max influences, if you're doing something that's sort of, like, sort of like this, where it's just basically something very simple on a chain, you can do three influences or do two if you want it to be a little more specific. And you never want to uh, do maintain max influences, you can, because if you maintain max influences, then it's much harder for you to actually to change what's actually in control. So you don't want to maintain. Um, you can remove used unused influences so that if there's a joint that's too far away from a certain section of the mesh, it'll basically be removed as an influence. And so that's fine. Uh, and pretty much everything else you don't need on. You can then set the fall off to a different value, and this has to do with uh, how quickly the influence of a joint, uh, how quickly that influence drops off based on the relative distance from the object. So these basic settings should be fine. You do your binding by hitting bind skin and then basically just binds it to the mesh and you can tell it's bound by when you select the mesh you can see that it's now highlight it's now all the channels are locked and if you look under inputs you see there's skin cluster information now on the mesh it means it has the binding history assigned to the mesh and also if you actually select your joint chain and you activate wireframe on shaded mode click this button here or you can go to shading and say wireframe on shaded it'll actually highlight the wireframe in this magenta color to indicate influence. Now, if you wanted to actually add additional influence to a pre-bound mesh, it's pretty easy to do and you can do it using either joints or you can use uh, actually other objects. Okay, so the deformation there isn't too bad. But if I want to add additional control in there so I could maybe offset some of the deformation a little more, I could do something like create let's say a we'll say a NURBS curve it can be any type of a uh, object it doesn't matter it could be a joint it could be a curve anything you want uh, usually if you're going to add additional control you know you just you want it to basically stay relative to the joint structure and you want it to be keyable and usually you're going to create all your external controls as some sort of a a NURB usually a NURBS curve because they don't render you can also use polygons and nerve surfaces, but you have to go into their settings and tell them not to render. And it's pretty easy to forget that or for people to confuse those with uh, basically parts of your model. And so you don't want to do that. So let's say I want this control object to influence the points in this area relative to the deformation that's occurring here. So I want both to happen. So I'm going to take this control. I'm just going to, we'll say let's group it. And I'll call this my We'll say offset. I'll say it's an offset group. Okay, 
And so now I'm going to take that group. I'm going to modify center pivot. So my pivot's actually aligned with the group. And I can do one of two things. I'm basically wanting to have that group stay aligned with any changes that occur to this joint here. Or should I say this joint here. So what I can do is I can either just parent it directly to it. Or if I don't want to actually add it to the hierarchy, but I want it to stay aligned, I can basically bring up my outliner and I can select that joint and then command or control select it, uh, select the group from the outliner. And then I can create a parent constraint maintaining offset so that whatever happens to this joint, that group is essentially going to follow along. Okay, so then it becomes basically a floating control. And so before I set the control up to actually influence the mesh, you usually want to zero out the translates and the rotates so that that control is basically has a keyable zero default. And so you can go to modify and freeze transformations. And, okay, so I froze everything on there. Okay, so now it's a matter of actually getting it to influence the surface, which it currently doesn't. As you can see, when I select the curve, the mesh doesn't highlight the magenta. So it's pretty easy to add it as an influence. So let me just call this, I'm going to label it. You always want to label everything you create. Usually you want to label all of your joints specifically too, but since this is just an example, I'm just going to leave the defaults in there. But for the curve, I'm going to call this my offset. And I want it to influence the mesh. I'm going to select the control curve, shift select the mesh, and again under skin, I'm going to add influence. If you're in an older version of Maya, it's going to be skin, edit smooth skin, and then add influence. I'm going to go to the option box. And under the option box, I'm just going to reset this so it's at default. You usually see something like this. What I like to do is I like to come in and tell it to lock the weighting on the joint structure. And I make sure that the default weight for the control of matting is zero, meaning that it will add the control as an influence to the mesh but it won't take it won't actually disrupt any of the existing weights because I want to actually set those up myself okay so I'm just going to add that in with zero default weights and so now when I select the curve you can actually see that now the mesh turns that magenta shade and if I want to essentially tell it to actually control the mesh now I can right click and hold on the mesh and go to paint skin weights tool Okay, and if you actually look in the tool settings, you actually see the joints that are influencing the mesh, and you also see your offset. Now you just want to unlock that, and now you can actually go in and basically start giving it control over something. So I usually add influence because it's interactive, and it's automatically going to take control away from something else that's influencing the mesh. So if I want this control to have total control, let's say over this area, I give it total control, paint it until it's white. Now I'm using color remapping so I can actually see the color variations because it's actually a little easier to track how much influence something has based on this uh, color range as opposed to using the defaults which gives you sort of a range of black to white with grays in the middle. And our sense of levels of gray is a little less uh, precise than our basically ability to observe color changes. Okay, so now I've actually given that control and as you can see now I can pull this and it deforms the mesh but also if I go in and select the joint and I rotate it that control follows along and therefore what it's controlling also follows along. Now if I decide I want to come in here and I want to balance this out a little more so it gives me a much smoother deformation I just go in again paint the weights and I just choose the joint that I want to have more influence over it and so I want the joint below this, which is joint two. And then I just come in, I just give it a little more control, which automatically takes some of the control away from our additional influence, but it gives us a much smoother deformation in this area. And so it looks a little more natural. Okay. And so when you're actually animating, you can key this, you can key your other controls for the joints, and you can actually create some nice very, some very nice custom deformations or distortions depending on whatever you've added the influences to. Whether it's to a face, to parts of the body, or uh, even parts of uh, geometry for like a prop or a vehicle.